To get closer to his French girlfriend, Dan hires Julie for some French lessons. But as time goes on, sparks fly, and they develop feelings for each other. In the opening scene, we see Julie walking down the street on her way to her friend's cafe. As she passes the flower booth, she overhears the buyer needing help explaining what kind of flowers she wants. Given that Julie understands almost all languages, she chimes in and helps the customer. Arriving at her friend's cafe, she greets her before sitting down. Curious, her friends try to find out who Julie is meeting with, and Julie shares that she might be getting the museum job, given that the professor asked her to meet him there. Her professor arrives, but instead of looking happy, he asks her for them to speak in private. As they head out for a walk, he shares the devastating news with her. Unfortunately, the department Julie's studying in will be closing, and because of that, the school won't be able to help her with finances and employment, which is what Julie especially needs. Luckily, the professor has put in a good word for her at the museum and got her an interview in the morning. Happy about the outcome, Julie returns to the cafe to share the good news with her bestie. As much as Lou is happy for her friend, she can't help but worry that the guy interviewing her might be handsome, which would be a huge problem for Julie, because she gets flustered around handsome guys. Despite trying to deny it, Julie admits it after Lou reminds her of the many times she has embarrassed herself in front of handsome guys. To make her feel better, Lou convinces Julie that an old professor will be interviewing her, just so she can feel better. However, as she walks into the museum the following morning, she is met with Dan. Despite being flustered, she manages to get out her resume and hand it to him. As they climb up the stairs to his office, he talks about the job position, and Julie thinks that she'll be digging for artifacts, given that he mentions animals and bones. Nonetheless, as he opens the door to his office, a golden retriever comes out, heading straight to Julie. Very soon, Julie realizes that the job is to babysit his dog, nothing to do with the museum. Dan explains that the professor told him that some students needed a job, so he thought that babysitting the dog would be fine. Julie thanks him for the opportunity, but also asks him to look at her resume before she heads out. Later in the evening, as she's helping Lou clean the tables, she complains about being jobless. She's tried applying to many places, but apparently she's overqualified for all of them. The idea of working at the cafe comes to her mind, but Lou doesn't seem to be too fond of it. As they get inside, a handsome guy seems to be checking out Julie, but once he approaches her, she scares him into leaving. Julie returns home and spends a couple of hours applying to jobs online. However, as she's about to stop looking, an ad for translation tutors pops up, so she decides to give it a go. In the morning, she is met by an elderly couple who want to learn Italian before they go on a vacation. Curious, the old lady asks if Julie knows French, because her son needs to learn French. Luckily for them, Julie is fluent in it, so the elderly lady wastes no time to call her son and schedule a meeting the following day. Not having a say in the whole situation, Julie agrees to help her son out. The following morning, Julie goes to the park, where she finds out that Dan is her son. Dan thinks that she's there for the babysitting job, but she lets him know that she's his teacher. He informs her that it will be the easiest money she's earned, because he doesn't plan on actually learning French. Given that his girlfriend is French, Julie advises him to learn at least a few romantic phrases, but he doesn't want to. He claims that they're not a romantic couple, and that their communication is just fine. Given that his mother has already paid for the hour, they try to make up for their time by talking about Dan and his girlfriend. A trip to Paris connected the two of them, and ever since then, they've been together. Although he claims their relationship is fine, he mentions that they're not as close as they used to be. Ditching the whole tutoring thing, Julie starts giving him dating advice on how to get closer to his girlfriend. Given that she likes photography and poetry, Julie gives him the idea to read her some French poetry when he meets her at the airport and takes her to a romantic place. He replies with a simple dismissal, and it makes Julie go crazy. Instead of making it a big deal, he explains that he wants his romantic gesture to be personal and rely on his girlfriend's personality, which is something Julie can understand. They say their goodbyes, but Dan's mother still thinks that Julie should pressure him into learning French. Julie lets him know that she's not sure, but his mother advises her to do so. Later in the evening, as Julie is finishing her lessons online, she gets a call from Lou, who she's not excited to hear from. Wanting to cheer her up, Lou suggests they have a night where they eat junk food and watch reality TV. However, Julie doesn't seem to be fond of the idea, given that she has a chart to make. After hearing how much she has to pay for one semester, Lou encourages Julie to convince Dan that it's a win-win situation, which only gives her a great idea. Julie decides to make a list of pros and cons for Dan, which will eventually change both of their lives. At the same time, we see Dan on the phone with Cosette, talking about some of their projects. Cosette seems to be down, but he doesn't know that. Given that they're talking about their project, he goes on a rant about how they don't need romance to function. But Cosette thinks that a little romance wouldn't be bad. Even though he agrees, she decides to hang up. This gets Dan thinking, which is why he decides to call Julie. Over at Julie's place, Lou looks through the chart, and instead of dragging it out any longer, she decides to call Dan from Julie's phone. But luckily, he's already calling her. Answering the phone in a hurry, Julie tries her best to sound normal, but he seems to notice that something's off. 
They apologize to one another, Julie for being pushy, and him for not wanting to hear her out. In the end, he agrees to learn some French, but lies that it's about work. Despite knowing that he's lying, she agrees to help him, and makes sure to mention Cosette. Given that she's visiting him in two weeks, Dan asks for classes to begin the following day, and she agrees. The following morning, as Julie finishes with Dan's parents, his mother stays to thank her for everything that she's done for them, while his father goes to the counter for some cake. As he's looking through the variety of cakes, his son walks in, and for the first time decides to open up about his relationship. She admits to them having problems, and is afraid that his mother is right. His father lets him know that he thinks Cosette is a wonderful girl, but they barely spend any time together. It seems like Dan doesn't have an issue with the way their relationship functions, so his father decides to drop the conversation. Dan goes quiet, and it seems like his father's comment has gotten to him. The lesson begins with the basics, but Dan seems to be out of it. Getting a call from a client, he packs his stuff and leaves, claiming that he's a busy guy, but Julie reminds him that she's busy as well. He reminds her that she only has two clients, but she lets him know that a new client is coming the following day. The following morning, Julie arrives at the cafe ready for her new client. Being the defensive friend she is, Lou lets her know that someone has been sitting at her table all morning, and suggests she kicks her out. A rather busy girl sits at the table, her focus being on the laptop in front of her. As Julie approaches her, she seems to be paying her no mind, which is when Lou steps in. Finally, the girl notices Julie, but her attention still seems to be on the computer. The girl wants to learn Spanish, to understand her playmate on a game online. Every time he tells her something, she wants to understand, but finds it hard to. As the playmate comes online, she puts her headphones on Julie and makes her translate everything. Julie manages to get them to flirt with each other, but quickly gets up, realizing that she needs to find new clients. Dan seems to be warming up to the idea of French, even though he's busy. Word by word, he improves his French. One evening after an eventful day of French, Julie goes home to check her emails with the hope that she's been accepted, but she has no luck. Same with Dan, he rushes home to talk to his girlfriend, who doesn't even call him, making him leave her a sad voice note. Walking through the museum, Julie and Dan practice some harder phrases in French, and it seems to be going terribly. Already frustrated, Julie suggests they take five, because they're not going anywhere. Dan is confident that he's really good, but she lets him know that he's still at the basics. Because of that, they return to the basics once again. As he admits to slacking a little bit, she opens up her planner to write about the process. Curious, he asks what she writes in the notebook all the time, and she reveals that everything that happens to her is written down, including her wishes. Even down to how many kids she wants, so he asks her whether she has a boyfriend. Changing the subject, she lets him know that she has two years to establish her career. A smug look on his face makes her question him, and he wonders what she does when some differences occur. Feeling a bit hungry, she decides to take him to a pizza stand, which surprises him a bit. As they eat the greasy pizza, he opens up about his relationship with Cosette, claiming that the spark is missing. This time, he considers doing a grand romantic gesture, but isn't sure if he has it in him. She convinces him that he can do it, mentioning that even learning the language is a huge gesture. As they walk around the park, they come across a fountain. Belle Fontaine is all he says, when she gets a genius idea. Instead of making him learn from flashcards, she thinks that she should bring France to him. For starters, they go to dance practice, where they learn a French dance invented in the 18th century. Next they move on to French poetry, and even though Dan doesn't seem to be paying any mind, he still participates. They also explore the beauty of the language through the cuisine. While Daniel seems to be having an amazing time preparing chicken, Julie is the one who struggles in this field. Dan's mother, however, seems to have mastered the juiciest recipe for a perfect chicken. As he's finishing his dish, Dan's phone rings, and he receives a call from Cosette. As he answers the call, Julie's pan catches on fire, scaring everyone. In panic mode, he tells Cosette that he's on fire, and hangs up the phone without thinking. After the fire goes out, they all calm down, and Julie decides to try some of Dan's recipes. A surprised look comes over on her face as she chews on the delicious food, complimenting him on his skills. When she offers her food, however, he is quick to turn down her offer. A smile forms on his face, as he claims to be relieved that a woman who knows almost everything doesn't know how to cook. Once the situation calms down, he remembers hanging up on Cosette, so he decides to call her. As he heads off, his mother stops him and asks him to be nice to Julie, because she brings out the best in him. Heading out of the class, Julie jumps in her ride, while Dan decides to walk on his way back. Arriving at the fountain, he calls Cosette back, only for her to tell him that she won't be able to make it, because she has an opportunity to go to the Galapagos Islands. Dan is hurt, but he understands, however, once he finds out that she's going on a holiday and not studying, he loses it. She explains that she works in a museum every day, and that she's not going to spend her vacation in a museum. As hard as it is for him to admit, he finally opens up about there being no love in their relationship. 
Cosette agrees, and they settle on not being together anymore, because they've grown apart. Dan's next stop to achieving French excellence is drawing classes. As they pick up their brushes, Julie proposes that whoever has the better drawing owes coffee to the other person, given that they're both bad at it. Picking up their brushes, Julie decides to test his knowledge a bit, as she asks for him to say, painting, in French. After some thinking, he manages to get it right. She calls him a master student, but he claims that she is a master's teacher. Giving him a look of comfort, she opens up about having fun while working with him, given that she's always working. He agrees with her, and despite being in a museum every day, he always finds art and culture to be interesting. After the drawing lessons, they head to Lou's cafe to have some coffee. As Dan is paying at the cash register, Lou's curiosity gets the best of her, so she flips his painting only to reveal that he drew Julie. Naturally, Julie walks into the cafe minutes after him, and sees the painting just sitting there. Impressed by his ability, she compliments the painting but he gets embarrassed and just moves to the sugar station. Lou starts asking her whether she likes him, but Julie reminds her that he has a girlfriend. Pointing to the painting, Lou lets her know that it doesn't look like he has a girlfriend. As he comes back, he officially hands Julie the painting, and she thanks him for it. After grabbing a cup of coffee, they head to the museum, where he takes her to a department she's lucky to be the first one to see. Almost immediately, she gets fascinated by the artifact in it. Heading to a table, she looks through the items and starts recognizing their origins. Moving to the magnifying glass, he shows her what seems to be a medal, but unfortunately, he doesn't know what it is or its origin, because he doesn't speak the ancient language. Luckily, it is written in Sabartuan, which is a language Julie speaks. Surprisingly, the medal seems to be of a royal family, more specifically, a gift from the king to his queen. Impressed by her ability and talent, he lets her know that the item is priceless, and that it wouldn't have been possible without her, which is why he promises to talk with the board about her, because they do need her in the department. Walking out of the museum, she stands in front of the statue, while thanking and revealing the news to it. The situation calls for a celebration. Julie grabs some cupcakes before returning to the statue. As she sits next to it and takes a bite from the cupcake, Dan sees her and decides to join her. He is surprised to find out that her mother made the statue, as he reveals that he's a huge fan of her work. Curious, he asks whether her mother is working on more projects, and Julie reveals that she has retired and moved to the beach, so she comes and talks with the statue to feel closer to her. She also loves the museum, because her father used to take her there all the time. Her wish of working there has been long since born, which is funny, because Dan had the same childhood, as well as the same dream. He offers to walk her home, so they head out. They talk about the weather and how nice it is, so Julie asks him to say it in French. After he does it successfully, she mentions Cosette, and how it would have been very nice if she were there. He assures her that she won't be coming, and when she asks why, he reveals that they've broken up. A worried look can be noticed on Julie's face as he talks about the breakup, and because he notices that she's worried, he assures her that everything is fine, and that they mutually agree to separate. Despite saying that he doesn't need romance, Dan admits to missing it in his life. As they arrive at her house, she asks him why he came to classes if he broke up with his French girlfriend. He reminds her that he's studying for work, but admits to wanting to see Julie as well. A smile grows on her face as he assures her that he'll keep seeing her, and not just for the lessons. The following morning starts great for Julie, as not only does she have new clients, but she also opens up about Dan's feelings for her. Lou asks her about their situation, and Julie admits to getting a vibe from him that's more on the romantic side. Not wanting to hear her nonsense, Lou assures her that Dan is already in love with her, given his gestures. The client walks in and heads to one of the tables, with Julie following. After some time, we see Julie and her client enjoying the game more than usual, when Dan walks into the cafe. Following the noise, he comes to their table and asks Julie for a private chat. Given that their session is over, she gets up quickly and they head inside. He finds it hard to say the words, but when he finally manages to, he invites her to come to the opening, considering that she had a part in it. Finally, he gathers the courage and asks her to come to the party with him, as his date. Pleasantly surprised, she agrees, but rushes to get ready and to tell Lou all about it. As she rushes to the cafe, excited to tell her bestie, he stands in disbelief that he managed to ask her out. Julie tells Lou everything, and Lou wastes no time in closing the cafe, and getting her bestie ready for the special night. In the evening, we see Lou impatiently waiting for Julie to finish getting ready. At last, Julie comes out in a beautiful blue dress, and Dan seems to be amazed by it. As they walk inside the museum, Lou heads to the food court, while Dan takes the chance to introduce Julie to the museum curator, Terry Harper. Terry expresses her gratitude for her help, claiming that she saved them from a disaster. Still, a question lies in her mind, and that is how Julie managed to translate the medallion. Seeing that Julie visited the museum quite often as a child, it sparked her interest in history and ancient languages, which is why she now knows many. Noticing her modesty, Dan chimes in revealing that she speaks ten languages, so Julie takes the chance to let Terry know that she's at their service if they need her. 
As Dan leaves with Terry to give some interviews, Lou and Julie explore the findings before Dan gives his speech. Thanking the public for being there, Terry introduces Dan to the stage for a speech. As he begins his speech in French, he sees Cosette in the crowd and mutters her name. With a huge smile on her face, she lets him know that his French lessons have paid off. Coming to a window overlooking the main hall, the two friends stop to see what's going on, which is when they notice Cosette and Dan together. Frustrated, Dan asks Cosette what she's doing there, but she lets him know that their breakup doesn't have to ruin their friendship, and he agrees. Her plane had a layover, so she managed to squeeze in a couple of hours and come to support him at his event. Hurt and disappointed, Julie stares out of the window, as they don't seem to notice her. Being the supportive friend that she is, Lou asks Julie what she wants to do, but Julie isn't sure herself. Seeing her confused, Lou advises her to talk to Dan before jumping to conclusions. Julie agrees, but asks for a couple of minutes to think it through. Dan thanks Cosette for coming, as they embrace each other in a hug. He offers to walk her out, and as they continue to the exit together, Julie can't help but think the worst. Trying to take her mind off of the situation, she walks into the room where the artifact she translated sits, and finds Terry there as well. Despite Terry telling her that she might be working in the museum shortly, Julie finds it hard to smile, as the thoughts of Dan being with Cosette keep coming to her mind. After walking Cosette out, Dan comes back asking for Julie. Instead of lying to him, Lou lets him know what the situation is, and he starts feeling bad immediately. Asking where she is, he hopes to find her immediately and explain, but Lou admits to not knowing where her friend is. Dan figures out where she is almost immediately. Walking into the room, he finds her exactly where he imagined her to be. Wasting no time, he explains the whole situation to her, revealing that he and Cosette are not together anymore. He suggests they go back inside, but she isn't sure. She asks whether they're on a date, and he reveals that some things have changed after seeing Cosette. Given that he hasn't said it before, he apologizes, before calling her sweet, funny, brilliant, and beautiful. He jokes about her being the only person who loves old languages more than him, and as he continues with the compliments, she shushes him and leans in for a kiss. Unfortunately, the loud applause is what shakes them, pulling them apart before they even get the chance to kiss. Taking her hand, they head downstairs to see what's going on. They come across Lou first, and assure her that everything is alright. Terry approaches the table and lets them know that they've had the most successful fundraiser yet, but that isn't all. Terry suggests bringing Julie on board as the in-house translator after she finishes school, with her own office, and full access to research projects. As much as Julie is in shock, she manages to get some words out and accept the offer. As Terry and Dan head to discuss business, Julie is left alone to gather her thoughts. Feeling like her dream is finally coming true, she steps outside to share the moment with the statue. Dan comes out shortly, assuring her that everything is real, and that she's not dreaming. Finally, the couple lets their emotions out, as they share their first kiss in front of the place they first met. A perfect ending to a rocky beginning, 